So with that, uh, we'll hear in turn uh, from each. So what I'll do now is introduce the speakers and give them an opportunity uh, to, to let us know their thoughts. So Yves Vesser, sitting here to my left, was born in Kievra, uh, Belgium, to graduate in social communication and theater studies. He was a journalist at the RTBF, which is the Radio Television Belge Francophone in Belgium for 10 years, coordinator of the Drama Center NUYE, and the director of uh, Le Manège, which is a very unique cross-border cultural center between France and Belgium, the cities of Mons and Montbeige. He's also a playwright and an author of comics. Most recently, <coughs> Yves served as the director of the 2015 European Capital of Culture at Mons, whose transformation included the opening of five new museums, <coughs> a concert hall, and some 15 urban art installations. Quite a feat. He's passionate for theater and books, and he was quoted in an interview saying that his motto is, Faites-moi rêver. Make me dream. So, Yves, tell us about how all your dreams came true in 2015 <laughs> and your experience in Mons. Thank you. Uh, maybe uh, I have to talk about the, the city of Mons because I suppose a few people here know Mons. It's a, quite a small city, uh, 100,000 inhabitants. It's, uh, it's situated in the French part of Belgium, in the south part of Belgium, not far from the French border. And uh, of course, uh, the question was, uh, isn't it too ambitious to, to, to dare to be, to become a <coughs> European capital of culture uh, when you are just a village on, on the planet? But uh, I think, uh, of course, uh, I answer uh, no, it's not too ambitious, but <laughs> because I'm, I'm sure that the uh, small and middle-sized cities in Europe they have no uh, an important role to play, and it's the same for, for Pilsen and uh, for San Sebastian Tambien. Uh, because really, uh, they have solutions to, to, to bring to the, the main problems of uh, European cities, uh, European metropoles, in terms of mobility, of security, of welfare, of, uh, uh, of culture, of uh, education for, for young uh, people. I, I, I'm, I'm sure we have answers to, to give to Europe on those levels. And too big to, to become and then to, to be European capital of culture was a, a kind of answer to, to those uh, matters. But uh, also, we wanted to, to give a new future, a new development to the city. Mons, uh, at the end of the uh, 20th century, was in a very bad uh, social and economical situation because for the 60s and the end of the coal mines era, uh, there, was, there was no real perspective for, for Mons, and especially for, for uh, young people in, in Mons. We had a very high level of uh, unemployment, and so there, there was something to do. And uh, the, the chance w came with a, a new mayor called uh, Elio Di Rupo. Maybe you know him because he, he became uh, later prime minister for, for Belgium, and now he's uh, still mayor of Mons, and he decided really to to give a new direction to to the city. I'm going to be shorter, but uh, I have to leave Jerry. But uh, and he he he, he bet on uh, culture, on uh, tourism, and on new technology to give a new start uh, to to his city. And he wanted to to have a kind of purpose. Uh, to, to propose to, to the inhabitants, not only to, 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 to give a, a few lines like that. And the idea came that uh, Belgium uh, had uh, right for European Capital of Culture in 2015. It was just in, in its timing, 10, 15 years. And uh, so we decided to, to propose a a program based on uh, culture, tourism, and new technology. It's, uh, we, 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 uh, we kept uh, the, the direction until the end. And, and now Mons is really an, an, 
I, I was there to, to tell a new city, a uh, completely changed, and uh, another theme of our, of our year last year was uh, the metamorphosis of the city, and, uh, but maybe we can come back on that uh, later. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to contrast it with the experience from Hillsend. Uh, before we really sort of get to analyze some of the more uh, things on the underpinnings behind some of the ideas that you mentioned. Uh, so we'll pass it now to Yidi Suhanek. Yidi is originally from Sobotka, Czech Republic. He's a graduate from the Faculty of Economics at the University of Economics in Prague with a focus on regional studies, public administration, and commercial communications. Most notably, from 2007 to 2009, he worked as the director of the festival Sobofest, which is a multicultural festival of music, sports, and workshops. Later in 2008, up to December 2010, he worked as a production manager and a representative of the Czech Pavilion in the Expo 2010 in Shanghai. Since 2011, he is the director of the OKD Foundation, a foundation that provides support to nonprofit organizations assisting those in need and improving social care, leisure, and environmental protection. And then most recently, of course, in 2015, he served as the director of the 2015 European uh, Capital of Culture, Pilsen, which centered on four themes, arts and technologies, relationships and emotions, transit and minorities, and stories and sources, both in relation to Pilsen and the European <coughs> debate. So, Yidi, if you could tell us, was your route to having the capital of culture the same or similar to Mons, similar goals? Good evening, Arad uh, Salde on. Well, to be honest, our journey to, the, to, become, uh, to become Pilsen as a European capital of culture started uh, as an outsider uh, in the bidding process in 2010. Uh, we were uh, definitely a weaker city and uh, we won with, I would say, smart and intelligent bid book against stronger competitors. And after that, what happened was a kind of crisis. And uh, my journey to the project uh, came in 2013, and I was adopted as a crisis manager, which is a first uh, uh, difference between uh, the city of Pilsen and city of Mons, where if, uh, as a good, uh, uh, pilot uh, uh, has been driven his uh, his boat or his his project for six years, so I've been in, involved uh, only two and a half a year, which is which is the first difference, and it it influences a lot the whole journey journey of the project. But uh, in general, we uh, wanted to open beautiful, decent former industrial. Uh, city of Pilsen, uh, 170,000 inhabitants uh, in the middle pass from the capital Prague to Germany to Nuremberg uh, and uh, Munich. Uh, so with big potential in uh, increasing the tourism, which was totally undeveloped and it changed dramatically. We made a significant uh, uh, increase of, ter of tourism uh, during the last two years and uh, the title is uh, for sure uh, much more wider. So tourism is the figures that helped us a lot. Uh, everybody now understands there is some impact, economic impact, politicians understand it, uh, it brings money, it brings uh, positive energy, it brings tourists, which is not the case of San Sebastian. You, you already have plenty of tourists, but it always can be better. But what if uh, already mentioned, the title is uh, the way more important for the overall development of the city. It's about urban planning. It's about having the milestone, having the common targets. Uh, it's about networking uh, with Europe, uh, which is to me one of the biggest benefits that we could contribute and uh, benefit for network from networking with uh, uh, Germany, Austria, Slovakia, with Mons, for instance, we did events together. People from Mons were sending us their uh, drawings and we were printing out products in uh, Pilsen 800 kilometers away and uh, sharing uh, many things. So 
to me, uh, now I'm happy and sad at the same time, because it's over and because it's over. Relaxed and wasted uh, at the same time. And uh, I think the change of the city is dramatic. It will never be the same. Uh, I think people appreciate it uh, that we took this uh, option. And now, now the difficult question is what to do now, because last five years, the whole city, the last officer, uh, marketing people, tourism people, culture people, business people, they were all talking about culture city. Some of them were mad about that, some of, some of them were happy about that. And now we're missing this milestone. So now the difficult decisions will come, what's the next milestone? So briefly, this is, this is our story. And I wish all the best to the Nostia San Sebastian for the opening and for, for the year and uh, a lot of courage to the organization team because they will need a lot of fortune and your support as well. Yeah, thank you both. Uh, you mentioned a number of things. I think you maybe had certain different challenges, but certain things were a bit the same. I think what stands out is you mentioned, you used the word metamorphosis and you used the words dramatic change. How, maybe you could speak a bit more about that. What should we expect? What do you mean change? I mean, you mentioned also tourism and maybe a bit more economic activity, visibility, networking with Europe. But what does that mean for the face of the city? Uh, we have changed two different uh, levels. Uh, the city has changed. It's a real infrastructure uh, metamorphosis because we were quite lucky to to receive uh, European funds to invest in uh, different uh, cultural, cultural infrastructures. As you told, we have opened uh, this year five new museums, a, a new <coughs> center for, for music, a new congress center, uh, and many works in the city to, to give a, a new attractivity to, to the city, and uh, it needs it. But, uh, and everything was coming, but thanks to more 2015, everything could be done at the same time, and the result is quite amazing. Uh, and not on, only for the foreign visitor, but also for people from, from the region. They, they were really surprised to, to attend so many changes in so few, few months. And so, Thanks to that, uh, I think we, we could uh, give back a kind of uh, proneness to the inhabitants of the region, because they need it. They, they need to, to believe in, in their city, to believe in their future, and especially for, for young people. So it's that, that kind of metamorphosis. But and, and Edie, what, how would you describe the dramatic change that you mentioned in your city? Well, um, first of all, it's the tangible things, the infrastructure. We have a new theater, we have a new creative zone, we have a new amphitheater uh, for outdoor events and some parks and everything. So it was, it was the plan. The city gathered and made a plan, okay, let's make this, which is, which is especially in, East, in Eastern Europe, always not the case. Uh, secondly, it's, it's the tourism that increased. Uh, it's, it's funny because we, we did uh, also something above 2 million visitors, uh, counted uh, on the basis of uh, cell phones or mobile operators' data. So we can confirm there was, oh, there was over 2 million visitors coming to the city of 170,000 people, which we find quite interesting. Uh, there was 35% people more that stayed overnight, which is crucial. It's, it's a good signal for hotels, for restaurants. It's the people. So going back to changes of the city, uh, infrastructure, economics uh, in terms of the tourism, uh, development of creative industries, which is, which is interesting because no one would have ever paid attention to something like graphic design, movie industry, uh, 3D uh, printing, uh, mobile applications, and no one had a, uh, 
intention to gather it somehow to make a business and planning on it within the city. And uh, the fourth biggest thing is uh, what Eve calls metamorphosis. We call it open up. Uh, there, there always was a big language barrier. Uh, people in Czech Republic, especially the older generation, uh, mostly spoke uh, Russian. And uh, we had a big problem in uh, speaking uh, German, English, etc. And uh, my feeling is that city opened itself. Uh, people are more scared of tourists and uh, influences from outside. And now, after this really big test, we know that we can we can handle it and uh, the open up towards towards Europe. This internationalization uh, is going to every single decision process of the city now. For instance, we're talking uh, about uh, development of uh, innovative centers. And the uh, first question is not where it's going to be, but who will be our partners? Is it going to be Germany? Is it Austria? Is it Poland? Which, which country is it? So this thinking is now going into any single detail of the city. And uh, it's the good, uh, good, good for, for the future decision and development of the city. And in terms, you mentioned earlier the networking with Europe, and you mentioned some examples now, and in terms of lasting change, ideas of, always, of collaborating and coordination. And this question is really for both of you. Do you feel that, uh, besides the, what you've mentioned in terms of networking and, and collaborative projects, has your work in, in each of your cities in the respective year, in any way do you feel like it's created a greater sense of European identity among citizens of Mons or of Pilsen? Uh, has that been, in any way, was an objective or something that was realized throughout the course of your work? <laughs> well, uh, I would say in our country, maybe 50% of people, when you're saying something about EU, they immediately get in the negative tone. EU means problem, restrictions, whatever. Uh, so. This is something that is essential in the DNA of regular Czech, Czech person. Pilsen is a little bit different because it's a little bit Western thinking uh, uh, city. And uh, I'm pretty sure the project helps to think about Europe in a positive way. Uh, we had to explain that we had roughly 7 or 8% of the overall budget from EU money. It's not a festival that EU makes to celebrate how, how great is EU. That's not all about. So once you have a chance to talk with people and explain it to them, uh, that there are different benefits that EU uh, brings you <coughs> or borrows you a brand and you can use it for yourself. Uh, EU gives you the networking uh, platforms that you can use for your development. Now you see what's behind it, and uh, it's, it's a long-term process. It's not three years, but it's, it's a new start. And now we're working with partners like Ars Electronica in, in Austria, uh, Hope with Tabacalera in San Sebastian, and uh, we have partners all over the world. Uh, and in Japan, we, we did 35 projects with Japan. So, uh, uh, supported by Japanese companies, which is something that is not uh, quite usual. And uh, these connections now are strengthening, and I have a good uh, feeling about uh, being more European city than before. And what I, I call a container festival, because you, you can uh, look at the programs of those here. It's always a, the same uh, guest. Uh, you can find... Uh, Pina Bosch uh, choreography, uh, uh, theater play directed by Peter Brook, and so uh, some exhibitions. But and it was going from Madrid to Lisbon, from Lisbon to Paris. And, but all those cities, they are European capital of culture. They don't need that kind of, of festival. And so it was not really working, to be honest. Even if it was a kind of uh, meeting with uh, some uh, European highlights. And from the, the 21st century, and mainly from uh, the success of Lille in France in, in 2004, 
I think the European Commission insists on the fact that a project of European Capital of Culture has to be uh, deeply uh, uh, rooted in, 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 the, in, the, in the city. It must, it must be a project by and for the citizen. And so, the challenge is, at the same time, you have to bring Europe to the city, but you have also, and maybe it's more important, to bring the city to Europe. And so, it's not always easy to join the two, uh, the two goals. And, uh, of course, we, we developed in, in Mons in 2015 uh, a few uh, European network, and mainly with uh, Café Europa. It was a, a network uh, putting together 12 cities in Europe, having connections. 12 cities in, in Europe. Es decir, conectábamos and 12 ciudades we had en Europa. To have a, a link together, but so. Y era un poco complicado uh, unirlas a todas. Uh, 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 sí, uh, bueno, desde luego que la gente sabe que es una oportunidad fantástica European estar ahí en el mapa, en el punto de mira. Pero I think they are more pro to, to have contributed to the development of their own city. Que of sobre todo lo que quieren es contribuir al desarrollo de su propia ciudad. Está claro que es un contexto complejo, to, pero creo que es más difícil develop, uh, desarrollar. Main, uh, European ideas in this context. But Yo que sé, it's coming. Um, they know Europe is carnes de identidad europeos I, y demás. Uh, no, uh, to be honest, Pero, quite to, to sí, honestamente, es bastante difícil. About Europe Hemos hablado de Europa durante un año, sí, sí. Oh, entonces, tu idea coincide un poco con nuestra última cifra de diciembre de 2015. Estuvo una socióloga hablando precisamente de lo que ella llamaba los sujetos urbanos. Y pensando un poco en alejarnos de la idea de sujetos de raza o de sexo, etc., sino de centrarnos en lo que son los sujetos urbanos. Y quizás esto encaja un poco más uh, en lo que tú hablabas de la identidad. Tenemos uh, preguntas también de los medios y demás, pero Voy a pasar primero la palabra a aquellos de vosotros que habéis decidido venir hoy aquí. La uh, traducción seguirá funcionando en euskera, castellano e inglés. ¿Quién quiere hacer la primera pregunta esta noche? Après Marseille, c'est bon. Après Marseille, je suis allé à Riga, en Lettonie. Et puis l'année dernière, je suis allé à Mons. D'ailleurs, monsieur Yves Vasseur doit me reconnaître parce que j'ai mangé à côté de lui à la fondation. Je sais pas, par, par rapport à mes cheveux, peut-être que vous vous rappelez de moi, on a discuté ensemble. En tout cas, je me souviens de. I remember the, the group of benevolent from Marseille. Yes. Voilà. Euh, donc, je me suis dit, bah, l'année prochaine, euh, je ne peux pas aller en Pologne parce qu'il y a le, le problème de la, du langage. Donc, je n'ai pas réussi à communiquer avec euh, Pilsen. Et je me suis dit, bah, on va faire créer un groupe franco-belge. Autrement dit, Montois, Marseille, Montois. Et toute l'année, j'ai essayé de créer ce groupe pour qu'on puisse, en tant qu'Européens, venir en Espagne. Mais malheureusement, même M. Elio Dirupo, le maire, euh, m'a beaucoup aidé. Mais bon, apparemment, personne n'est venu et je suis désolée. Alors là, maintenant, je lance un appel. Est-ce qu'il y a des Espagnols qui peuvent venir avec des Marseillais l'année prochaine à l'ouverture de l'autre capitale une autre capitale. Là, je lance un appel parce que je pense que se retrouver entre Européens pour vivre les mêmes expériences, c'est formidable. Et croyez-moi, hier soir, à la Tamborada, quand j'ai chanté, j'ai dansé avec des gens d'ici, qui sont devenus mes amis, hein, comme ça, en, en espace d'une soirée, c'est formidable. Et cet hymne européen qu'on a entendu plusieurs fois en deux jours, c'était très émouvant. Donc, je pense que 
euh, tous les Européens pourraient se grouper pour aller au capital. Le problème, c'est l'argent, parce que, bon, évidemment, ça coûte cher pour prendre l'avion, le train, etc. Donc, moi, je n'ai aucune subvention, donc ça me coûte très cher. Là, je suis venue euh, à Mons, on était venu à 13 personnes. Là, je suis venue avec 7 personnes seulement. L'année prochaine, il n'y aura peut-être que 3, je ne sais pas. Hein. Donc, euh, je, je, je laisse ma carte de visite à toutes les personnes qui veulent bien venir avec moi l'année prochaine avec nous, parce que c'est une association, voilà. Nous sommes à la, à la pension Goïco, en auberge de jeunesse, comme à Mons, où à Mons, nous avons été très bien reçus, parce qu'il y avait une auberge de jeunesse formidable, voilà. Alors, je m'appelle Nicole Georges, voilà. Alors, le monsieur veut parler Ah, c'est formidable, déjà, j'ai un petit poisson, là. Uh, so thank you. There was uh, basically the idea added as to the possibility. Oh, oh it was translated. Okay. Uh, it was translated into Spanish into the mics uh, for streaming. It was the really mention of uh, traveling to the European capitals, in fact, and, and that sort of movement. I don't know if you wanted to respond or. No, there's nothing to add. It's a good idea. I remember very well as, uh, <coughs> when they were in, in, uh, in Mons, but uh, as she has told us, quite difficult. Uh, next year it's in, in Denmark and uh, ship, so it's not so easy. It's long travels and so, but why not? That's another issue that makes us sort of question what are the objectives outside of the city landscape uh, for these capitals of culture. Uh, on that point, we have a question from Facebook. This question is from Imanol Alvarez. Uh, uh, the question is, if we accept that governments and public institutions should promote culture uh, through their citizenship, if this is a as a responsibility and a duty of government institutions, what should those objectives be? Uh, and if you consider the, the numbers, uh, would it not be more desirable to promote an active form of culture? And by this he means classes, workshops, uh, physical education, rather than passive culture, which is simply attendance to cultural events uh, as spectators. But I, I think more and more the, the jury uh, in charge of the designation of the cities is very uh, attentive to that, to that kind of, uh, of, of projects. And they, you, you need to have in your project uh, particip what I, I call uh, participative projects and uh, uh, we had in Mons uh, a very large call for project including uh, everybody in the city and, and around with uh, very good results and uh, we had, had 20 projects coming from the population to the, to the official program of the European Capital of Culture. In this program we had uh, musical, theatrical uh, projects, including uh, the population, and with uh, each time a uh, very big success, because it's for me a, a lesson of this year, that uh, people is now waiting for different, uh, different things than usual uh, cultural, cultural projects. Uh, the, the main successful projects in Mons, they were not as a official theater program or musical program, but all those surprises we were organizing in the city, the new places uh, to discover a new, new way to share together a project, to participate together. It's really the, the, the lesson to, to take from this year in Mons. I'm, of, of course, talking about Mons, but I think it's it's true everywhere in Europe because all the classical culture you can have it in in your in your living room with a large screen with the IFE with everything internet everything is coming to you but uh, so if you want to take people out of their home you have to propose things they can have through the television or through the internet and the and the answer. It's really a, a big and beautiful surprise of, of 2015 in Mons, yeah. Yiri, would you say that you promoted a more active sense of culture uh, in Pilsen through the project? Well, um, this 
participate, participatory or active culture, it's so much cliche and so much true at the same time. It's funny because the question started with the promoting uh, uh, politics of EU, politics, and it ended up with participation. So the politicians, they, they expect something totally different uh, than small participatory events and workshops. And it's about the managing of the expectation of the majority of the city. In our case, uh, I would say 90% of people, when we won the title, expect that it will be Madonna and Pink Floyd playing uh, every weekend uh, on the main square. And it caused lots of tension because the project is the way more complicated and the participatory events and projects are essential to develop the city in the long term. We prepared, for instance, uh, interactive uh, exhibition of uh, photos that we brought from Marseille 2013 and we let the people create their own gallery. We asked them to uh, show into their suitcases and find 100 years old pictures how the city looked like before and we just provided them platform and create that uh, big, uh, big exhibition consisting of 5,000 pictures. And it was one of the most successful events, and no one expected it. It's, it's, the, it's the open up. We asked people to go, go out to the streets to Melina Mercury Day, which is called also European Neighbors Day, and ask them to uh, make a barbecue together. And we just brought them uh, a band. We brought them good beer, because we are a city of beer. <laughs> I haven't mentioned it. Pilsner Urquell comes from Pilsen the best bottom fermented lager. <laughs> it should go there to the brewery and uh, stay some hours there. It's one of the highlights. Anyways, uh, going back, we provided them platform. Uh, good food, good beer, uh, just uh, uh, marketing, uh, marketing uh, layout and ask them to contribute, to do what, whatever they want and it became a tradition and this is an example of those successful events and for sure there were small events that no one ever uh, even noticed. It was 10, 15 people, in our case uh, focusing on minorities from Ukraine, Vietnam, Mongolia, uh, living in, in our cities. But these, these projects are important and you have to find a good balance and during the whole year give something uh, for large-scale audience, especially before the summer, at the end of spring, to bring the positive energy, put something in the winter time just to keep the attention after the opening, and then end up with something big at the end of the summer. That's easy principles, that's what people will appreciate, and it helps uh, the tourism and uh, the, uh, the inhabitants of the cities because they are essential. If you're not playing fair and you don't take care about your, about your employees as well, <laughs> but uh, inhabitants, uh, inhabitants of the city, it's just to take care only about tourists, it, it would not make sense for the development of the city. So I make another hand here in the audience. Hi. Uh, I'd like to ask, ask her, after these events, do the actual citizens uh, feel more European? Do you think it helps them promote some sort of European sentiment? Well, uh, I would not say that we found hundreds of ambassadors of EU during the, during the main year, but uh, people are definitely more open. We talk about European issues. Uh, we raise European flag, which was not the case. Just not, we don't have to do that, or many institutions, they don't have to do it. They just like to do that because now we have uh, connections to, to other countries. So I would say, I would say yes, it's, it's bringing benefit, but it's not tens of percent, it's small steps. I would say <laughs> no, but no directly. It's, it's not so, so easy. But uh, I'm sure uh, know the people of Mons in the area, they are really proud of what happens. They are really proud to have invited so many visitors from everywhere. They are uh, so proud 
that the city is now on the map of Europe and that the name of Mons is, is well known in, in, in West Europe. Uh, and of course they, they, they know it's thanks to, to this project of European Capital of Culture. They know that thanks to Europe because Europe gave them this fantastic opportunity to develop a new, a new project. And that's a, so the job we have done during years before, I, 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 sh I should tell between 2007 and 2010, <coughs> so, so before the designation of, of Mons and Pilsen, it's, it was really to explain to the people what is a European capital of culture, because this concept is not well, well known, not well known enough. And so we had to explain, it's not a festival, it's a whole year. It's not money from the city, but money from uh, different uh, uh, sources and uh, and often to tell them if you miss this train it's not going to come back soon um, never and next time in Belgium is 2013 and uh, 30 uh, 2030 and so and it's very long and so you have to to take this, this change and Little by little, we, I think we succeed to explain what it, what it was and, and know they have discovered the, the old things and uh, they, they appreciate it, just like in, in Pilsen. But you know, it's so difficult to explain before what, you, what is going to happen. But uh, no, they know. But uh, I think the European Commission, I, I, I told them a few times, they have to develop uh, a campaign of promotion of the con of the concept of European capital of culture because I don't regret to have spent so many time so much time to explain but if we could save this time for other things it, it would be better uh, it's not only a joke but I think it's true if, if tomorrow I don't know the mayor of San Sebastian announced uh, San Sebastian is going to be a candidate for Olympic Games in 2000. Uh, I don't know, 28. Uh, maybe people is going to think he is crazy, but but they know what uh, Olympic Games is. You have not to explain. And European Capital of Culture, people look at you like if you was a, uh, coming from Mars. It's really strange. And no, they know. But of of course. But uh, they had to know before because it it can create really a uh, uh, feeling campaign uh, around your, the preparation of your year, and we we didn't have it. But I don't regret anything. But uh, I, I'm talking for the, the next colleagues. Well, I think the sentiment reflects the sentiment we've sort of extracted through through our meetings here as well. Uh, this lack of information on not just. Uh, the European Union and its work in the cultural capital, but in all areas and aspects of policy. Uh, as a law professor of the European Union, it's difficult even to teach uh, to students and to conceptualize because it is under so much change uh, and, and the structure is incomplete and it's something we've accepted uh, and we're moving forward, because hopefully constructively, but I wonder if maybe, uh, and this is another idea that I wanted to add in from, uh, from last year from one of our speakers, who's a German philosopher, Edgar Grand, who spoke a lot of cosmopolitanism and that maybe we have a responsibility to tolerate difference rather than trying to forge one single concept of European identity or, or culture as European citizens, maybe the mark of that is our difference and tolerating such differences, right? The ability to be different without fear. Um, and that these need not be exclusive categories. So what do you think? Are you, were you celebrating difference, maybe being from two sides uh, of the continent? Uh, was this about asserting your differences or trying to create common ground through, through your projects? Well, I didn't catch the question totally, but uh, speaking about differences about, and uh, uh, finding opportunities in being different, I think f for sure we can, we can learn from, we can learn each uh, other f from each other. We've learned a lot from Mons, for instance. When I hopped into the project, we had, uh, we had a plan to organize 
10 or 11 joint big projects. Apparently, we end up with five big projects due to the uh, money resources and everything. And uh, we had a chance to work together for three years on development of a theater play, schools program, uh, digital project. And it, it helped a lot. This home and away, yep. and most. Home and away, exactly, home and away. We had a chance to promote uh, our culture in, in each cities. And these three years were just uh, one of the best experiences we did uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for the whole year. So uh, if I may suggest you something, uh, you have a great partner in Wroclaw 2016, big, strong city. Uh, See how here. <laughs> the director is over there. So uh, once, once you have a chance to do something, do it, because these cultural differences are helping a lot to growth, grow both of you. Nothing to add. Richness and difference. <laughs> uh, more questions from the participants. Yeah. yeah. Hello, my name is Matthijs Mausen. Um, I've got, I mean, uh, hanging into what you were talking about is the way of how I see identity is <clears throat> it's basically a process of how you uh, negotiate who you are with the rest of the world. So that means that identity is something fluent. Yeah? Some, it's not static, it's not the way you're born is not the way of how you will die. It, will, it, it, it varies in different stages of your life. And I think that's the, one of the functions of a cultural capital is to give people the ideas or the, the input to see who they really want to be during that year. And that fits into what you earlier said also with, about Saskia Sassen and her ideas, that basically a cultural capital could give the city places that people recognize where they could where they could negotiate their identity with the rest of the world. Yeah? So this is my question also to Pilsen and, and, and Mons. Can you name such places in your city that could maybe inspire cities like San Sebastian to recognize during the year what what are concrete important places where where cities now, where your citizens now can negotiate their identity and what is the importance of these places? You have depot, you have mm. other places, but is that really true? Is that really happening in, in this year? If I may start, it happened. Thank you, thank you for for the question. Uh, in our case, what was missing to our city is the big portion of pride. I can say Pilsen is now 50% prouder city than it was in 2014. Because of the attention of media, because of we won the title, we did it, we managed to organize uh, and make a successful one of the most complex projects of the whole EU. So that's what the regular people think. And uh, regarding the concrete uh, spots in the cities or projects, for sure now we have a creative zone. We transformed former transportation depot within one year or maybe eight months to a creative zone, which was a plan B, but it, it worked out and uh, we have something well, the Prague and people from Germany are coming to see what, what happened in the small Czech Republic. So it's one spot. Another thing, it's the interventions in the public space. We are a really conservative city. And uh, our faculty of design, together with our support, installed giant pink rabbit eating a human body into one of the traffic, uh, traffic spots. Uh, and it caused so much controversy, and uh, uh, people were arguing and fighting for the rabbit. So these these kind of things are helping to bring uh, the more uh, energy to to the city. And just it's not about green parks and everything. It's bringing the controversy about the discussion and make these uh, spots visible. And it doesn't have to be in the city center. We created maybe, or we produced maybe 40% of our program and projects in the suburbs. So these, these are the places that now are part of the game and uh, I would like to invite you to see them. Yes. Uh... The same in Mons, of course, we told 
Uh, we have opened new museums, new places for culture. It's important, but for me, it's not really the most successful uh, uh, things in 2015. But uh, those different places, for, for instance, mm -hmm. I can talk a bit about the Café Europa. It was a simple building based on uh, two or three containers put together. It was a cafe, so you can have a, a, a coffee in the afternoon or a beer, and you can meet people and talk with them to create a, a relationship around new technology. Because when you talk about new technology, you see uh, a guy in his room with uh, his uh, screens and uh, working alone, and we wanted to create, it, it was certainly not an internet cafe, but just a cafe where you can talk and you can participate to uh, explanation about a, a, new, uh, a new way to communicate, or I don't know. And uh, there was this big screen uh, connected with uh, 12 other European cities, and Pearson was part of them and where uh, they can share, uh, for instance, uh, the, on, on the Friday uh, at, at 12 o'clock, there, there was an uh, internet meeting uh, around uh, uh, cooking, because uh, the Café Europa was situated in Mons in, in the market, the, the weekly market. And so people decided with Pilsen, with uh, Sarajevo, with, uh, I don't know, another city, to, uh, to buy the same uh, uh, vegetables, for instance, and then they were making a receipt together. And how do you prepare the tomato salad in Sarajevo? And in Mons, we do like that. And so, very simple thing, but it had a fantastic success because people need to talk. They need to, to be together, and they are so lonely uh, every day. So uh, small things like that were, were really working. We have opened a, a beautiful garden. People d didn't know it in, in Mons, in a private house, and dedicated to literature. And so I, I thought maybe we are going to have a, a few people coming to just to, to listen to uh, poet. Or, but it was an amazing success. I remember during the, the summertime, during the afternoon, there were 300 people sitting in the grass talking about a, a book, uh, listening to a musician, uh, uh, poet, singer, things like that. Very, it's not expensive things, very small things, but different. And so those places, I hope they are going to, to go on in, in most in, in, the, in the future. Things are, are going on because it's really that way we can talk with with other uh, people in other countries, maybe, yeah. More than a theater, more than a concert hall. Now, you both <coughs> described a really nice initiatives, and you're painting a beautiful picture, but as you know, of course, there's also another side of the coin, and the European capital of culture are also critiqued by many. Uh, we have another question here, and uh, effectively, this is raising the issue of the critiques that the European capitals of culture are acts of megalomania and excessive spending. Uh, so on that point, uh, we have a question from Eider Litaralde, uh, who wants to know, effectively, what is the return on this investment to citizens beyond just uh, the increase in tourism? Excuse me, can you repeat Keeping the question? From the departure point, there's a lot of spending, and this is a critique of the European capitals of culture. Uh, the question is, what's the return to citizens for well, so much public spending beyond tourism? Well, the tourism is the most visible one and you can, you can measure it with the sophisticated methods. For instance, our project uh, uh, cost roughly 20 million euro, a part of the investments. In total, it was roughly 60 million. I think San Sebastian uh, budget is roughly 55 million euro for, for the programming, so it's maybe three times bigger than, than ours. Uh, so it's, it's the money that comes back to the city. We calculated that at least it's at least 20 million euro, the same sum that city and the other investors invested, will 
come in refund to the, uh, to the profits of uh, providers of services in the, in the, for, for one year. It's not for everyone. Uh, the question was mostly what the regular person, uh, what the regular inhabitant gets, even if he doesn't work in a hotel or a restaurant. So it's, it's the, at the overall attractivity of the city. Once you have the title, you win something, you have more pride, uh, you have uh, more attention in media, uh, your living standard is getting higher, you, st you simply live in the city that is uh, going up, which means if, if, you, uh, uh, if you own a flat, for instance, the prices of, uh, the free, of real estate is going higher. There's a, any single part of the economy if, of the city is influenced uh, by this project. For, for sure, it's expensive. To have ECOG title is expensive. That's uh, yeah, undiscutable. Sure. But it brings in these small details like prices of real estate, uh, uh, attractiveness of the city, the wages. If you have a city where the living standard is better, the wages are higher. So this is a long run and I think it's worth it to have the title. I'm sure. Yes, yeah, it's true. If a city like Mons or like Pilsen wants to, to, to pay a propaganda campaign on a European level uh, to have to the same results, it's impossible. You can't pay it. It's so simple. So Martin Aubry, the mayor of Lille, told that in 2004 uh, brings uh, to the city 10 years of, of, uh, of, of campaigns. So I, I, I can believe that easily. So it's the first thing. But second thing, it's uh, for most, of course, we have not still all the, the results, but uh, we think that uh, for one euro we have invested in the operational program. Uh, between four and six uh, came back to, to the city. Of course, for hotels, strong services, etc. But also uh, for all the enterprises uh, which uh, have uh, worked for the infrastructure, also those workers who are from the, 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 the area. And of course, uh, it's a, a lot of money we, we could add to, to the to that um, coming back from Monet, yeah. So I think it's really I impressive. More questions from the participants? We have a hand here in the front. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, whom did the initiative come from at the beginning of, the, of your project? Did it come at the top, at the beginning from the politicians, I mean from the top, and it had to come down to, to the citizens for them to, to participate? Or did it come from citizens who had the idea at the beginning so, and had to persuade then the politicians to, 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 to play the game? As I, as I told, the idea I think couldn't come from the from the bottom because people doesn't know it exists, so they can propose the project, and so the idea has to to, to come from uh, from the mayor of the city because the, the city is, is a can candidate, and so you have to, it's a political decision to bid for for, for the, the the project, but of course he, he can't do it alone, and so. And for, for instance, I, 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 to, I told you how it, it happens in, in Mons. It, the project of the mayor was to develop the, the city through culture and tourism and new technology. He didn't know how to, to sell this program to, to the population. And I, I, I was a member of the kind of think tank uh, about those uh, matters. And I remember very well, I, I, I told him, but do you know that he, he didn't know? that in 2015 is a tour for Belgium, to, for a Belgian city to, to become European capital of culture. So no, I don't know why, but <laughs> because maybe it's a good idea to, to bid for the, this title to, 
to have a, a goal for your p program. And so uh, they say, oh, good idea. And so in 10 seconds after, he, tell me, he told me, uh, just you take care. And so uh, it was the beginning. And so of course, at that moment, I, 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 I create a real staff with uh, different kind of people from the associ with associations from the local groups and, and so on. But at the beginning, it's the, the city has to to bring the, the the project. If the city doesn't bring the project, it's not possible. I don't think mm. so. I think in our case it was a little bit different because what I've learned it was about five to seven people sitting in the pub, including the head of the culture department. And he came up with the idea that there will be something like European Capital of Culture, maybe in 2008. And uh, what I've learned, they invited for a beer deputy uh, mayor. And uh, <laughs> she kind of liked the idea. And that's, that's how it all started. The impulse came from the alternative scene. It was not a mainstream culture, and uh, it was politicians, uh, they saw the opportunities for themselves, for the city, how, it's always, how it always is. I, I see nothing bad on it. And uh, after that, there uh, was be one person pushing it through. It's just a big project, and uh, there must be someone that is willing to give heart and uh, fight for for it and uh, the situation once you have uh, uh, real people behind it from the cultural scene it's <coughs> it's a it's a win-win situation the other thing is that these people that are usually at the beginning of project they are not those who finish the projects for instance in our projects i have only one person that uh, lasted six years in the project so that's, that's, that's life and it's, it's just the different phases of the projects and different people involved in the, in the whole thing. Mostly uh, there are situations once there are two different or three different mayors from the candidacy to the uh, realization of the projects. So that's, that's life. Uh, more questions from those present. Questions? Uh, if not, uh, perhaps bring up when you mentioned kind of management and the challenges, um, and also on your point that first it's a political decision. Effectively, uh, is culture an afterthought? And if so, how do you manage that when it is maybe so strung up with political and economic considerations? Well, first of all, we are not, we are not saving lives. We are not doctors, we are just making our lives better, providing better cultural service, making our cities uh, better places to be. So that's good to have always in, in your mind and even if there's so many challenges during the year, people are leaving the, uh, the team, there is so much stress, there, is, uh, uh, there are negative reactions from media. Uh, maybe one half of the cultural operators uh, in the city, they, they sort of against the projects. They just want to be part of big business. They just want to uh, do their thing and do it their own way. And now there's someone coming and saying, okay, you make your program more international. You bring EU dimension. You take people part of it. It's just not uh, only about showing rock bands on stage but you, you shall develop something that engages more people. And it brings lots of provo provocative questions, and uh, uh, this controversy is, I think it's, it's good, but at the same time, it's really demanding on, on team, and uh, it's really hard two years of the main production. Eve, what do you think? Is culture big business? Yeah, yes, it's a business, of course, but uh, the, the hardest part, it, it was really at the beginning. As I explained, because people don't know, and so if they don't know, they can invent everything about it. It's going to cost a fortune to the city, it's going to, to be the project of a few 
people in Mons inviting the stars from everywhere in Europe and nothing for the artists in Mons and things like that. And so it's, uh, you, you have to be quite courageous to go and meet. Maybe we, we were organizing meetings every, every night, with, sometimes with 10 people, sometimes with 200 people in, in, in cafe, in uh, uh, factories, in uh, libraries, everywhere. It's just to, 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 to talk. And, in the beginning, it was very, very hard because and so people it was uh, oh, very critical or ironic. What do you think, most European capital or culture, what, and things like that. Oh, and so, uh, but little by little, we, we could first explain. And then the big difference came when we, we got the title in 2010. So we said, oh, they are not so bad. They, they, they succeed to get it. So, okay. And then, from at that moment, we we start with a, a kind of a participating campaign to explain people it was their project, it was their year, and they have to to contribute to the success of this year. And we propose different ways to to participate, and little by little, it came. And but uh, you know, until the the, the last minute. Uh, one hour before the opening, the, the beginning of the, uh, the start of the opening ceremony, you don't know what can happen. But, uh, and I wish you the same when you, you have spent a, such an evening and we had, it was the 24th of January, so more, more or less one year before yours. Uh, so you know the, the boat is on the sea and it's going to arrive. Uh, so you've both made references to the citizens, or they, speaking of that, I imagine you're referring to the residents in each of your respective cities, but in light of the new arrivals to the European continent, migrants and refugees, how, and with your vast experience now in managing cultural projects, how do you manage a cultural landscape that's changing and under the circumstances in which it is changing? How do you face this challenge as managers of culture? Well, um, we are in a kind of specific situation that uh, in our country we have just hundreds of refugees. This, these attempts of the EU of distributing uh, refugees between European countries just didn't work. Now we all know it because once uh, refugees from Germany were placed to the Czech Republic, they, they wanted to go to Germany. So they, they, they're not staying. But there are hundreds of them, and uh, uh, I think the role of culture is, an, is essential. We don't have uh, a specific program on refugees uh, so far in our country because we didn't need it, but I'm in close touch with uh, our friends uh, in, in Germany, mostly Nuremberg and uh, Regensburg, and they prepared a special programming for refugees uh, to help them socialize themselves small things like taking them on a walk on Sunday and showing this is the bakery. It's not open on Sunday because this is a theater and we go there with kids in the afternoon because blah, blah, blah. So these are things that, well, culture can help to socialize refugees and uh, uh, I think uh, cities should pay an attention and create special programs uh, uh, for them. Well, of course, it's a... Uh such a incredible problem and so we we can solve it alone but uh, what we can do and uh, just to listen to them to hear them what they have said what do they have to, to tell us because we don't know them we don't we just uh, hear what what the, the information can can tell tell us but uh, and for the moment, there is a theater project in, in Brussels, the National, and uh, they they have mixed professional act, Belgian actors and uh, refugees. Just to oh, stop it to listen to to <laughs> so Daesh is coming. It's to to just to to hear them during one hour or two hours. Who, who are you? Why are you come, uh, 
did you take those, those, those terrible boats? Uh, why, why did you risk your life to, to just to, to be in the street in Brussels? Just, just that. I think it's a few things, but uh, if we can have this feeling and, and just to, to it's, it's, a, it's the beginning of a kind of socialization with, with them. Just, uh, but uh, the, we, the, the problem is not very sensible in most, it's more localized in, in Brussels in a few cities where they, they are hosted. But it's, uh, it's quite... Uh... Yeah, it's, it's an intense topic and challenge. Yeah. In fact, uh, next month on Wednesday, February 17th, we'll have with us Dr. Annika Rumens to discuss uh, the refugee crisis and migrants and immigrants in the European Union. So you're all invited uh, to that. Uh, I'd like to give a final opportunity to those present to ask any questions. If there aren't any questions, uh, we, before we break, uh, there will be questionnaires being passed around uh, by the Cultural Capital 2016 Foundation to get your feedback. Uh, it's voluntary, but your feedback is appreciated. And I'd like to give my thanks very much uh, to, to both, to be Eva Servons, to Yidi Suhanik of Pilsen. Also, congratulations for your year. Uh, tomorrow they will officially pass off the torch uh, here to us in San Sebastian as we embark on our year. Uh, so thank you for your petition and thank you to all of you for your attention and being here tonight. And we'll see you next month. Eskeri Casco and buenas noches.